So here are the things you need. Rubber stamps, stamp pads. I happen to have a whole bunch I picked up at a garage sale. Somebody was getting rid of their scrapbooking stuff, so that worked out really well for me. A bunch of Sharpies. I have a whole bunch. And uh, foam brushes and some paints. I have more paints. These are just examples. A pair of sharp scissors to cut fabric. I used white fabric. You can use different colors. Um, could be interesting. Right now I'm just doing white because it's the most versatile. You're also going to need a sewing machine if you want to finish the hachimaki. You don't have to, but it might be a nice touch. And um, an iron to, again, to kind of get it pressed out and looking good. So since this was a festival, um, we were going more for budget hakima, hachimaki, not necessarily um, authentic. So what I did is I cut four inch strips and then, um, this is just an old sheet, and then strip it down and measure around, tie, and that's how you know how long it is. Pretty simple. And to do that, you cut it and just in, at the edge and just rip it and it'll rip um, all the way down so you don't have to cut all the way down because the reason you want to do that is you want to make sure that it rips straight and so you're going to rip with the fiber of the fabric so here's how we do that and we cut a four inch strip and again this is all kind of estimating so it's not a big deal if it doesn't end up exactly the beautiful part about this project is that Everyone will get a chance to, um, to learn how to use a sewing machine. So here we go, we're ripping. See how easy that goes. Oh, everything's falling down. And here we are ripping it. To do it. Okay. So now we've ripped a strip, so it's a very long strip. I'm going to tie one piece around my head and then we'll see how big it needs to be. So out of that one length of the fabric, I can get three hachimakis because I measured it and then I folded it and it ended up being folded in three. Okay, I'm just going to start stamping. I'll pick my stamps that I have. Um, again, the bigger the variety of stamps that you have the better. I have a decent variety but it's not huge so um, let's see what I can come up with and again um, you know I'll vary the colors. I happen to have a lot of different stamp colors lucky for me um, and I, uh, I'll go with it. Now when you do this if you're doing it at a festival I recommend that an hour before you decide to close up you put away the sheets so that nobody can see it. Better still take it to the car get rid of it out of the area so that you cannot say oh here's another piece of uh, fabric because <laughs> they will do it it's such a popular um, activity and you'd be amazed okay okay so the easiest one with the stamps I have is to do a musical theme so here is a keyboard that's swirled uh, musical notes uh, more musical notes, and then there's this um, upside down fella who's doing a tr trumpet. And more musical notes and an audience listening. Or is that an orchestra? Might be an orchestra. So that's kind of neat. Um, I also have these, some anime looking ones, which worked for a Japanese anime festival. Some stars, different kinds of stars, which is always great. Um, a butterfly. Okay, here we go. I don't know if you can see it, but it's got a lot of the musical stamps on it. And then I repeated this thing with the uh, people dancing. I don't know if you can see it there. But it's here, here, here. They're changing directions because I don't want to commit myself to wearing it either sideways or right side up. So I can do both now. And then I threw in just a bunch of different size musical notes. Here is um, the orchestra playing, the notes coming, and then it goes into the piano and then the dancers. And now what I'm going to do is, and it may seem a little bit um, radical, but I'm going to take the uh, stamp pad, various stamp pads, and yes, they are a little trashed um, after everybody uses the stamps in all the different colors. That will happen. You just have to get used to that idea. 
and uh, I'm going to drag them over parts of the um, of the fabric so that I'm actually just uh, adding a lot more color to get uh, to make it a lot less white. So here it is, hachimaki number one. And to you, it might look like a great big mess, but to me, it's something that I created. And I'm going to put that aside, and we'll iron them all three together, and then we'll um, uh, sew them. For the second hachimaki, I'm going to use this stamp I made. It's just a piece of wood, and I put this natural fiber in it, and uh, something I picked up on the ground. And then um, what I'm doing to get the uh, ink depression, I am inking the um, the fiber and then I instead of pressing it onto the fabric I press the fabric onto it so like this and I want it to be one continuous looking um, creation so I'm just going to do it right next to each other and I'm going to do that all the way up I may change colors along the way I'm still deciding okay so here's the second hachimaki I've left a space in the middle that's where I'm going to ask husband to draw something because he draws so nicely and we'll figure out what that's going to be. Now for the third one I'm going to draw with Sharpies. So what I decided to do was to take this double stripe, um, it's kind of wavy stripe, and just randomly make a pattern here and I'm just going to color each of the little um, spaces in a different Sharpie color and see how that comes out. Okay, so here's my fabric after I've created it. Just basically colored it in. There's some bleeding. I think I would try a few things differently next time. Put down the lighter color fabrics for lighter color um, marker first, and then the darker color, so that um, maybe the bleeding wouldn't happen. But um, but it's cute. Regardless, it's mine. So for the finishing part, I'm just going to use this one because these two. I'm going to do for, um, I might use this on something else um, because I like how it looks. So for cotton fabric, basically you set it on the cotton setting, which actually is right there, the iron. Now you'd be surprised at how many people have not ever used an iron. I would not recommend that you let the 10 year olds and under use it, but maybe 11 and up or 13 and up, make your decision. And so now I've ironed it flat. I have enough width here, this is about four inches. I have enough width here to be able to sew it along the back and make a seam and still have a decent width here. And look at how pretty that is, I love it. Um, so I think that's what I'm going to do. So right now I'll sew this and I'll turn it and then we'll iron it. This is my fancy Bernina. It's an older model, but it's great, and I love these machines because they're very heavy duty. Now, this is an overkill for this kind of activity, and you really never want to put a machine of this um, quality out onto a floor where a lot of people are going to be, you know, handling it. Uh, so pick a less expensive machine. Now I'm just going to stitch across here and down here and then we'll go from there. So here we go, stitch. And a lot of people again have never used this sort of um, machine. A sewing machine is a simple sewing machine and a simple straight stitch for those of us who um, really know how to use a machine but again this is a first time experience for many. And now I'm going to turn it inside out and iron it flat, and that's pretty much it. Okay, we've turned it inside out, and now we're just ironing it flat. I'll start over here. Oops. which is the hottest setting. Again, not, so, not something you want your young kids doing. The young kids can do the stamping, the parents can do the ironing, or you can just have someone stationed here to do the ironing. 
And as you can see, I did the whole um, hachimaki, um, front and back, because I ended up turning under most of it. Now when I did this over at the um, Cherry Blossom Festival, I just did a double fold and they stitched along the edge. That was because I wasn't sure how many I could accommodate with the one sheet, and I didn't want to run out of fabric prematurely. But here I'm doing it for me, and it's separate. Now the ironing also helps to set the um, the inks. So, so there's actually not just a you know fixing of the crease. You're actually setting the ink a bit when you iron. And now I don't know what particular type of ink I got, and so um, because of that, um, I wouldn't guarantee that this would hold through a wash. But if it if it could possibly hold through a wash, you're standing about a chance of it doing that by um, heat setting it. Okay, there we go. And the others I will do another time. Hachimaki. It's beautiful. And it's mine. And there it is. Hachimaki.